Hi everybody, welcome to the week four progression for cycle two. This is our last progression in this cycle. So we're gonna build on everything we've done in this cycle so far and the next cycle or next week's progression will be a new focus on different purposes for the shoulders core and the exercises we've been doing. So getting into this last progression, we're gonna start with our core exercise. Now there's going to be a couple components to this exercise. It's going to be a challenging variation. We're going to be doing the dead bug that we have been doing the past couple weeks. However, we're gonna add an anti-rotation component where a band's going to be trying to turn us and we're going to be fighting and holding solid. So I will show you quickly how this position will look and then we can set up. So we need to attach a band and you can lay flat on the ground. You need to attach a band to something that is perpendicular to you so that the band is pulling you across but you're holding solid. And then as you're holding solid, we're going to be doing the dead bug repetitions. So go ahead and you can set up flat on your back on the floor or on a bench. This band is trying to pull me towards it, but I'm holding strong. Heads relaxed back, legs start in the dead bug position, smash the lower back down. Let's extend for one rep. Let's extend for another, keep everything tight. That band's trying to pull us, but we're keeping the lower back smashed. We're keeping the hands towards the ceiling. There's four reps, go ahead, extend for five, extend for six, keep the lower back smashed nice and tight for seven, keep holding strong against that band for eight, two more for nine, extend last one for 10. And now we'll go ahead and switch sides. So I'll move my bench a little bit so that I have a better angle to show you and you can flip 180 degrees. So again, the band is trying to pull me the opposite direction this time. We're going to extend the band towards the ceiling, hold nice and strong, lower back is smashed down. Let's extend the leg for one rep. We're gonna go for 10 total. Two, core stays tight as I extend for three, four, fighting that band. Five, you'll feel extra engagement because that band is trying to pull us away. There's seven. Keep going nice and smooth for eight. Two more, keep the back smashed. Even as you get tired, last one, 10. For our mobility exercise this week, we're finishing with our last thoracic spine stretch, opening up the mid back. Next cycle, we're gonna move back to shoulder flexibility in mobility exercises. So what you're going to do is you're going to start on your stomach with your elbows underneath of you. Very important key to this stretch. Without this key, you are going to miss some of the stretch and even bug your lower back a little bit. So notice that pelvic tilt's coming back. We need to tuck our hips by squeezing our butt, tucking belt buckle to chin. So you should feel those hips tilt under. So again, watch, I'm going to tilt under, tuck my hips, hold that tuck. That's gonna lock my lower back. And then now you can go ahead and push with your elbows, push yourself up and extend your lower back. I'm also pushing my chest forward as my chest is extending up. Notice I'm not looking up too. I don't wanna put that much curvature in my neck. You can stay looking down, but I'm pushing with the elbows. Hips are staying tucked, pushing and arching my upper back. And let's hold here for a total of 20 seconds or so. But we have about five left. Keep pushing the chest forward, extending the upper back. Keep the hips tucked and go ahead and relax. For our shoulder blade exercise this week, we're gonna be on hands and knees doing a variation of the A. This is gonna be one of the most challenging variations of this A bar movement for the shoulder blade because it's just one arm at a time, which makes it much harder to get the back tension that we need, but that's why we're doing this and that's why we're going to work on this variation. So on hands and knees, I'm going to lead with my shoulder blade, squeeze that shoulder blade down and back as I raise out to the side and then return back down. Notice I'm not raising way out to the side. I'm not concerned with height of my arm. Squeeze the shoulder blade back. Let's go for another rep. I'm just stopping 
just above the line of my body and then returning. It's not about height, it's about squeezing that shoulder blade back in return. And let's go ahead and repeat for about 10 total reps. We've got about five at this point. We need about four more. Squeeze that shoulder blade down and back towards your back pocket. Pinch that shoulder blade towards your spine. Lead the raise by engaging that shoulder blade in towards your spine. Two more. One more. And then we'll switch sides. Remember raising back at an angle, not straight out to the side, not too close to my side, but at about 45 degrees, shoulder blade engages like it's pulling my arm up. So as my shoulder blade squeezes in towards my spine, it's pulling my arm out to the side. You should feel engagement around your shoulder blade, close to your spine, in the back of the shoulder, maybe, maybe even the tricep a little bit. Let's go ahead for three more. Two more. Last one. Go ahead and relax. For our rotator cuff exercise, we're revisiting the position that we saw in week two. And that was side lying with a straight arm. And this is gonna be the most challenging position that we've held in so far because of the long lever or the long arm. We'll hold for 20 seconds. Go ahead, straighten your arm out in front, palms facing down, shoulders squeezed back. We'll hold here. And again, gravity is pulling this long lever down, but the back of your shoulder is working to hold the arm and the weight up. Keep solid, hold strong for three more, two more, one more. Go ahead and relax. We'll switch sides here. Side lying position, arm is straight, shoulders set down and back. Let's go ahead, hold towards the floor. Make sure your wrist is neutral as well. You don't want this weight kicked up as that can tend to aggravate the elbow over time. Hold for another 10 seconds, shoulders strong, arm is straight out in front. It shouldn't be down, but just straight out in front or even up a little bit, it's okay. Hold for two more, one more, and relax. For our last pulling strength movement in this week four progression, we're going to go to a weight bearing position where you're going to be standing and you're gonna want a chair or something that you can put a support arm down on to hold strong through this straight arm. Knees are gonna be bent, hips back, shoulders are forward. And then from here with your weight, you're gonna row with a high elbow. So not a high shoulder, but a high elbow straight out to the side. Go ahead and row, and we're going to hold there. Support arm is strong. Row side shoulder blade is squeezing towards our spine. So you should feel your back working. The back of your shoulder will be working as well. We're going to hold here for 20 total seconds. Keep pushing into the bench or the chair, whatever you have in front of you. Hold for three more, two more, squeezing that back. One more, and relax. So I'm going to go ahead and switch arms. Support arm is strong, knees are bent, hips are back. My back is flat, not arched, but flat. Row with that elbow out to the side, but again, shoulders not necessarily high. The elbow is simply high. As I hold here, squeeze that shoulder blade towards the spine. Hold strong, hold strong. I don't need to go past my chest here, so notice I'm not holding way far in a row. I'm just holding in a position where I feel fully retracted. Hold for three more, two more, hold strong, one more, relax. That was one round of the week four progression. Depending on where you're at or how many times you've done this progression, you may do one, two, or three rounds total. Remember, adjust your weights and your band resistances to make sure that it fits you and makes the movement feel like work and feel challenging, but not be overwhelming or not cause you uh, to perform the movement incorrectly. We've been working on our dead bug position throughout this progression for the core. We've been opening up the thoracic spine, 
mobility. We've been working on some sideline rotator cuff positions, some A variations for the shoulder blades and our pulling strength. All of those focuses and purposes are going to change for this next cycle, cycle three. And we're gonna have new focuses, new purposes that will build you up and continue to hit the various components of your shoulders that are going to help maximize your shoulder health and shoulder performance for archery.